everybody. It's me, Kathleen Madigan, and welcome to Madigan's Pubcast. I wasn't ever going to do um, any kind of pubcast, and mine is a pubcast because, yes, I'll be drinking. I am not drunk, but, you know, maybe if I talk long enough, I will be. Just depends. Uh, I have someone running the board who's also a, um, a bartender. So see, how I won't even have to get up to get a drink if I need a drink. One will just land right here. How fantastic will that be? For those of you who can't see this and you're just hearing it for the first time, um, I have a, on my desk, I have a Dolly Parton prayer candle. I don't know why everyone doesn't. I have Fred Bird, the mascot of the St. Louis Cardinals, and his head opens up uh, like a beer sign. And then I have a Jameson Irish whiskey. Um, I guess I'd call it a gravy bowl. I guess in Ireland back in the day, they just served um, uh, whiskey in, in gravy bowls. I was told this is what they used to serve it in, and I like that idea because it looks like your grandma's pouring you something healthy rather than me just slamming shit out of a bottle. Then I have my Dolly Parton poster, and then if you, some people can see this on YouTube, but if you can't see it, behind me there's a poster that says, A Million de Madigan. It's a movie poster from a movie I didn't even know existed that had uh, Cesar Romero and Dustin Hoffman about somebody, I don't know, I googled it, somebody lost, stole a million dollars or something, but it just made me laugh. And my friend, for those of you who know stand-up comedy, uh, Mike Lacey at the Comedy Magic Club um, got that for me and then paid to have it framed, which is, as we all know, that's the expensive part of fun posters. You waddle on into Michael's and the next thing you know, some person who's kind of nerdy tells you it's going to be $800 to frame your $24 poster. And then you're like, wait, I thought this whole place was 70% off. What happened to that? They're like, that's only on Thursdays. Anyway, so, and I'm drinking a Mick Ultra, and I have uh, my koozie, which I call the trick koozie, because look, oh, right here, it says St. Louis Cardinals, if you can see it. Then you turn it, it's a double. There's the St. Louis Blues Stanley Cup champions, and I'm not going to count this Stanley Cup. So whoever wins this bullshit Ron Robin tournament, you know, I love hockey, and I want to watch something. I get it. But let's not act like any of this shit is real. You can't have a round robin tournament. The whole point of the Stanley Cup is that the Stanley Cup is that you play, and who's tired by the end, and who can make it to the end. There's no. This is ridiculous. But you know, it's something to watch. So. uh there you have it. And then on my left, for those of you who can't see it, I have a life-size uh, cardboard cutout of Stevie Nicks that my friend Robin gave me. And uh, uh, yeah, that she's five foot one. I'm as tall as that. That's the exact height of Stevie. And let me tell you what, if you forget that shit is in your house and in the middle of the night you wake up to get water, Stevie will scare the shit out of you. You're like, who, who the fuck is that? Well, it's Stevie Nicks. Sometimes I put it in the closet because it also dogs don't like it. If I have friends, uh, Ron's dog hates it. Mustard, the French bulldog, he will just lose his shit. And I don't think it's personal. I don't think he hates Stevie Nicks. Uh, and speaking of Stevie Nicks, um, I'm going to read to you guys a little something. I posted it on Twitter because it, it, this is what I posted too. Um, give me a second to get to my own Twitter account. Um, Rolling Stone, the magazine, wrote... Stevie Nicks is the spiritual warrior leader we need. Wear a mask and stay inside. And I said, I told everyone this after Belladonna. Once you've heard Edge of 17, there's no going back. She's been my spiritual. Her and Dolly and Cher. Cher's a little mouthy. I like it, though, on Twitter. But you don't really think of her as like a sweet soul or like a witch. She's more like in-your-face lady in a great way. She's very mouthy on Twitter. I like it. Um, you can follow me on Twitter too at Kathleen Madigan. Uh, I don't really care. <laughs> My Twitter, that's a thing. Okay, I do Instagram. This is how I view them all. I view t Twitter as an Ar Irish bar fight. You have to be in the mood to argue and people are going to say shitty things. You got to man up. You got to put on your little suit of armor and go, I'm going on Twitter. Instagram is more like um, a dance party. There's nothing hard. It's very easy. And when I'm hungover, I love it because it's just pictures of dogs. I just sit in airplanes hungover and look at pictures of beagle puppies thinking, when I retire, I might get a beagle puppy. Well, I'm almost retired, but then I got to go make more money when this starts again. And I have to say goodbye to all you freaks. And can you, can, I, I don't think a beagle is a good dog for like a Weston. <laughs> Little mouthy. 
That's why I like them, though. They're tiny, they have big personalities, and they have a lot to say. <sighs> so I may have to wait. And I'm not going to get one of the purse dogs. I never want to. If, if I have a dog in a purse, it's going to be like a German Shepherd. Then I, I'm going to put a Shepherd in a purse just to because I can't, I can't, I can't do the purse dog thing. And then I can't have a yappy one. So, um, and then uh, Facebook. Facebook to me is like the 50th uh, wedding anniversary party of your parents. That's what Facebook is. I mean, I do it because I know people do it and some people still like it. But I, I had just conquered my space. And then my nephews go, uh, Kathleen, nobody's doing that anymore. I'm like, what the fuck? I just learned how to load a video. What do you mean we're done with this? And they're like, yeah, Facebook is a new thing. That was like 20 years ago. And so I held my own little, I would say, boycott of Facebook because I didn't want to learn something new because I hate technology. I hate everything about it. That's why I have a MacBook Air. It's the easiest thing. It's just colors. Hi, Kathleen. Press red. Oh, well, okay. Me press red. I like it. There's 10 Stevie Nicks quotes. We're going to have some quotes throughout this. Here's a good one. Even in my really bad, drugged out days, I didn't go away. <laughs> good for you, Stevie. I bet all my drunk days I don't go away. I'm not a drugger, but all my drunk days I don't go away either. Um, so I never got the hang of Facebook. And then I got really mad at Mark Zuckerberg because he sold all of our information without our permission. And I don't really believe he has feelings. I believe he's a robot. He might even be an alien. I don't trust him, um, but you know, I gotta post things on there for older fans and uh, my parents, but they probably won't be listening to this podcast. I tend to post my drinking photos on places they won't go, even though I'm 54. I'm like, they don't need to see this. They don't need to see a screwdriver on Delta on the 6 a.m. flight to Atlanta. What? What is the matter with you? I would immediately get a call from my mother. You know, I've seen those pictures and I just think you, this could get out of hand and this could get away from you and you might want to think about rehab. And then I go, that's a great idea. What are you and dad doing? That's how that conversation goes. Um, so here I sit and here's why I sit here because there's a monster up there and it's the COVID monster, the corona, or as Trumpy likes to say, the China virus, China, C-H-Y. N-A-H, China, China. Uh, I was scheduled to be in Boise and Reno on one weekend. Not an easy little uh, routing, shout out to my agents, but I was excited to go to Reno because you know what Reno is? Reno's what Vegas used to be and I don't understand why they don't have a whole campaign and go, do you miss the old Vegas? Because I do because the old Vegas used to have um, bands in the lounge. So like when you're playing video poker or playing craps, you hear live music and then Vegas realized, oh, we don't need this shit. People still come in and gamble, which they will. But you know what? Then I went to Reno and they still have all that. And I gambled three times longer because the band was great. And I just sat there and the bartender knew me from doing the gig. He already had beers on ice. <laughs> no reason to leave. Anyway, I did the show in Boise and then I sat in a Marriott courtyard because that's fancy in Boise. That's a fancy hotel in Boise. I was in a Marriott courtyard with um, a bunch of basketball players, college basketball players, and if I didn't already feel short, you know what's fun? To get in an elevator with four people that are six foot nine. That's fun. If I didn't feel like a Lilliputian alien already. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I sat there on Wednesday and watched the world close down and I watched it on CNN and as soon as I saw Disney World and and Major League Baseball when they got into sports I was like okay this is serious shit because um uh that's the money they don't close stuff down so I thought this is well and actually let's rewind I had a corporate gig in Aspen Colorado this was the craziest um thing ever so I'm sitting in this, uh, well, sitting in a bar wouldn't be crazy at all, but I'm sitting in a bar in the afternoon and I'm having a beer because I'm off that day. And I order a salad. And the most beautiful man, older, probably 65, I, he, he was stunning. He comes in and he takes off all of his ski clothes. He'd been skiing. And he goes, 
Well, what is the news today? Right out of the gate, he's a German, real German, right? But he's so dashingly, you can't not look at this guy. I've never seen anybody, I don't think I've ever seen anybody in real life as just ast astonishingly, sort of like a Donald Sutherland, if you will, a German version. And uh, he goes, what is, uh, what is the Corona news today? What do you have? Because he saw me reading on my phone. And I said, you know, that's weird because you seem to be the only other person interested in this, but I keep reading all these stories about this thing in China. And then I thought it was super crazy because I'm like, wait, there's a city in China with 12 million people and I've never fucking heard of it. I'm like, Wuhan? You mean like Wu-Tang? The Wu-Tang Clan? The band? Wuhan. Wu-Tang? Wu what? No, Wuhan. Wuhan in the Midwest. Wuhan. It's absolutely Wu. <laughs> Wuhan in the Midwest. That's what that is. That Wuhan. But I thought 12 million people, that's the size of Los Angeles. And I've never heard of this place. So then I started Googling it. It's an industrial area. Probably not a lot of fun going on there. It's probably why we've never heard of it. Probably why there's no Viking cruise to Wuhan. Wuhan. Um, so anyway, that was in January, at the end of January. And me and this German guy, and then he said, where did they say it's starting? And I said, they said it's starting at something called a wet market, which I didn't know what that was. And then I had to Google that. And then I saw all this crazy stuff. And then after downing a pint of beer, like an enormous thing of beer, he just went totally racist on the Chinese. And I was like, I'm the only one sitting here going, wow, he's full blown Nazi. I mean, he's about two more beers from saying what went wrong in World War II and how they really could have won it. That's what I felt. But that conversation ended. That was my first sign that something was going wrong and no one was paying attention. And then those people were flying into uh, the West Coast because that's the easier route. And I thought, well, um, maybe I should take this seriously because I'm on planes every week, right? And even my mom, now are you still flying? Nope, I Ubered to Boise. Yep, <laughs> no other way to get here, mom. So then I called my agency and I said, should I be doing a casino tomorrow night? Because if I go, if I just leave, now it's only two flights. If I wait, it's gonna be four flights because I got a flight to Reno from Boise and then blah, 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 through Salt Lake, blah, blah, blah. And then a lot of old people at the casino were writing on my Facebook in the facial book because I'm in touch with my older fans through the facial book and they were apologizing that they couldn't come because they, they were older and then the younger people were like on the Instagram and Twitter were all about they wanted to come but the casino just said no anyway and had I known that would be my last flight uh, until now July end of July beginning of August I definitely I got upgraded the whole way why because I'm a million miler on Delta. Delta what? The best airline ever. Um, and you know what? They have really good orange juice. And I got upgraded, so that means free drinks. What, what? Had I known that was gonna be the last flight, I would have had as many screwdrivers until they stopped me. Probably eight, depends on who the flight. I know a lot of the flight attendants, they see me enough. Sometimes I get on the plane and there's one wait, and I'm like, wow, maybe I do have a drinking problem. There's already a there's already a sweet water beer in my chair. Whose beer is that? And then I hear somebody laugh and go, hey, Kathleen, we saw you on the roster. I'm like, what? What? Roster's not the right word. It's a baseball word, but you know, flight inventory, my inventory? The manifest. That's the bartender's boodles who just shot that one over there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, I'm coming to you from the middle of America. Um, Mainly I live at the Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri and then sometimes on a lake in Tennessee because it's closer to an airport. So I'm bi -lacal. I'm not bi-coastal. <laughs> a lot of famous people want to say they're bi-coastal. I never have been bi-coastal. I did live in Los Angeles for a while and I'm glad to see my friend Joe Rogan has finally figured out there's no reason to be living there. Unless you're in the movies or on a television show, which he's not. He does his UFC stuff in his pot, this, and you know, I didn't need to live there anymore. And I looked around, there were too many people. And then my golf call, the golf course that I like to play with my friend Drew, uh, that caught on fire. And I thought that's, you know, what does baby Jesus need to do to tell me, get the fuck out of here. That's all I would hear, get out of here. 
I never liked it anyway. I was never an LA person because this is why people like LA. Even my um, dentist would say this sometime out there. Well, it's 75 and sunny every day. I'm like, that's exactly the problem. Maybe I don't feel 75 and sunny every day. Maybe some days I like the outside to match my inner mood, which is sleepy and lazy today. I don't want to feel guilty because it's 75 and beautiful. Then I, my, the, my dad's voice goes in my head, why aren't you out doing something? And then I got to strap on rollerblades and fly around Hermosa Beach and up and down the Manhattan Beach Strand. And I don't want to do that every day. I like seasons. I like snow. I saw not a lot of snow. Not like Minneapolis, let's not get crazy. Just, you know, a couple inches so it looks like a Hallmark movie. How about that? Um, fall? There's no fall in LA. There's no seasons. I saw, saw Shaka Khan one time on Larry King, and she goes, Larry, I said to my children, you know, we can't live here because there's no seasons. Y'all end up crazy. And I thought, there's my other spirit animal. There's like 10 of them running around. I totally agree with Shaka. So I sold that place and then just figured I'd love to live at the Lake of the Ozarks full time. Um, but it's two hours, two and a half hours to an airport. And, but you know, if I never start again, that's the plan. Just going to hunker down in the Ozarks. Uh, by the way, if you've seen the show Ozarks, we owned a family resort, Madigan's last resort. I still have the key. I'll put it on YouTube at some point, show you guys. And I have the brochure. Um, and that show... If you substituted meth for the heroin, eh, pretty accurate. 30 years ago, my mom's really mad about that part. They're making us look like hillbillies on this show, Ozark. I go, wow. She goes, well, we have a Panera now. Well, all right, mom. You send a, an email to Netflix and let them know that we have a Panera and you'd like one in the next shot, if possible. <coughs> so that's what's, uh, that's what's brought me here. And all this equipment, um, this is a pain. This is a pain in my ass. So I really hope you guys enjoy this time we're gonna have together. Who used to say that? Was that Mr. Rogers? No, it was Carol Burnett. I'm so glad we had this time together. Well, I hope you do. And um, <coughs> excuse me, that's not a COVID cough. That's uh, 20 years of Marlboro Lights still hanging around. Although I'm not smoking those anymore. Um, I think we should start talking about the COVID. What are we gonna do? Are we gonna send kids back to school? Are we really? I've told my brothers and sisters that have children in grade school, which is a total of six of them, six children. Um, I will see them at their graduation. It's been nice. I got to know some of them for seven years, some of them for nine, and some of them for 10, 11. And it's over now. If you take your super spreader ass up to that Catholic school, which I know has no goddamn money, even though the Catholic Church, Google this, got $8 billion of PPE, PPP, PPP, yeah. I think it's billion, might have been million. I don't know, you guys Google it. Million, the bartender, the bartender says million, you don't know. Yeah, I do. What? Yeah. All right, I'm Googling it. Here, no, I'm gonna, here, this is my impression of Lewis Black, my friend. Ready? Here it is. Here we go, you turn your phone on. And then he goes, how much did the Catholic Church receive in PPE? Oh. 1.4 billion in PPP loans. So, it's like my brother says, you know, and then the Catholic Church says, could you come up to the fundraiser? We need to get some new uh, we need potholes in the parking lot. Why don't you call the Vatican? They just got $1.4 billion in taxpayer-funded PPP loans. I mean, how is that, how is that okay? Who's monitoring? Well, for what? To, you don't even pay nuns. They're free. They, who are you paying? The priest? The parish, to keep it open, just close it for COVID. Shouldn't be there anyway. Then open the doors again. You own the building. You're not renting, unless I've heard that there's no, oh, I heard that Our Lady Queen of Peace is renting. No, we're not. We own the church. I, I do not. I'll have to read more about that. But, you know, this is like when I went to Catholic grade school. One day, okay, the Catholic school I went to, we didn't have buses. Public schools always had buses. Catholic schools never have buses because they claimed we didn't have any, quote, money, cash cash money, because um, they were rappers back then. 
Um, they said we didn't have any money. And then, I'll never forget in eighth grade, one of the nuns flipped on a slideshow of the Vatican's art collection. And then I raised my hand, and I was not trying to be a smartass. I said, could they sell some of that so we could get buses? And the next thing you know, my father was up there, and there was a powwow of nuns and people saying I was being a smartass and I was insulting the Catholic Church. You know what? Why do you view a question, and why do you view an idea as an insult? Maybe I'm, a, maybe I'm an idea lady. Maybe that's a good idea. We sell one Da Vinci, just one, and you could buy buses for all of Missouri. Hmm? So, my brother and sister, what are they supposed to do? Keep them home? Then they're the weird kids. I mean, they're alive, so that's pretty good. They're the alive weird kids versus the dead cool kids. But the kids won't die, but they'll bring it home. But they, and they're super spreaders. We've learned it. We have learned it. They are super spreaders. I won't even make eye contact with them. Don't you look at me. I don't have goggles on. Turn around. Because I, I don't want to get it. I'm 54. I smoked forever. That could be very bad. Um, and then what about my parents? And then my one brother, uh, a long time ago, he said if something happened to, to him and his wife, would I take his kids? And I signed a piece of paper saying I would. And I never thought that could po be possible. But if the super spreaders come home and get them sick and they die, then I have to go pick his kids up. And then what my sister doesn't know is going to happen is I'm going to drive them over to her house and leave them and go, look, I just agreed to go get them. And I did it. And I don't have the infrastructure for people under 40. I have a lot of liquor in this house. It's not set up for children. Nothing's child safe. Um, but yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to start, you know, sending them back, I guess, and then waiting for that shit show. And the other shit show that we're already seeing is Major League Baseball. We decided let's do that. Now, they're not quarantining like the, um, the basketball players or um, the hockey. And hockey, they're quarantining in Canada, so they're even kind of safer. Why? Because Justin, the most beautiful leader in modern days of any nation. And then people go, you don't even know his politics. I don't give a shit. I don't care if Justin said, I'm going to round up short Irish people um, and do something mean to them. I'd go, well, we probably did something. What did we do to make Justin do that? He's so handsome. Anyway, there's a picture online if you, without a shirt on where he's doing a charity boxing match. And you're like, dude, you're too hot to be a world leader. This is just ridiculous. Um, but he, and, and I think Canadians just cooperate better. I think they're more, if you want to call it socialism, the de dirty, evil word of socialism, whatever, the, whatever you want to call it, they, you don't hear this bullshit that you hear down here. This is America, and I'm going to do what I want to do, and you can't freedom and all that crap. They don't. And guess what they're doing now? Opening shit safely. And they all, I, I could, they're starting, comedy clubs are opening, things are opening because they did it. We didn't, we didn't do, we, they did it as one nation, unified. We did not. We left it up to the states. And I think, I think after the Civil War, we should have stopped that shit. Yeah, we left it up to the individual states and look what happened. Other states attacked us. Treasonous little bastards. I always think Arkansas might have them in it again to attack Missouri in the middle of the night. I never sleep without one eye open. Knowing Arkansas at any minute can round up a bunch of hillbillies and get some four-wheelers, and they'd get through those Ozark Mountains in no time at all. And I'm the first line of defense, me and my parents in a hunting cabin. <laughs> I mean, my dad's a pretty good shot. My mom, no, no. <sighs> so Major League Baseball, what did they start uh, a couple weeks ago? And then today, you guys will hear this a little later, but uh, a week later or whatever, but um, my Cardinals can't play because two of them are positive. They're supposed to be playing Milwaukee, and I was enjoying that. I was enjoying... Oh, by the way, heads up, folks. Uh, I don't know what kind of TV you have. I have direct TV. Um, they probably don't want me saying this over the air, but I have heard, let's just say I kind of know, that you can get the MLB package for 30 bucks. Mainly, by the time you make this call, baseball will probably be canceled, but you could try, because my friend Ray did it. Lou's friend Ray. And he got it. Um, so throw that out there. 
I don't make a commission off that. Just that's just a helpful hint of what to do. Um, but it probably will really be over. But the, I have watched. Uh, I watched the Cardinals play the Twins, and I watched the Cardinals play the Pirates. Um, which there were a couple really funny people on Twitter. I love the people on Twitter. I love Instagram too, but they don't really talk. People just like stuff. But Twitter, I like the back and forth. And then I've met some of you guys on the road, my Twitter people. And it's really weird when you meet um, people in real life, the Facebook people, they talk as much as they write on Facebook. Oh my God. The Instagram kids, they literally don't say anything. They get a selfie, run away. Twitter people, they keep it short. They have something very smart to say. They don't even care about a picture and they leave. They just wanted to say hi, which is, it's all fine. It's all fun, but that's just how that, break, that breaks down. Anyway, so I watched these um, uh, MLB games and I said to Lewis, um, cause he was here, Mr. Senior Black was here for a while and I have deposited him to a different safe house in North Carolina. I drove halfway there with him in the car ranting. You know, you all think that's fun till it's in your car. And the radio's on and the news is on. How could they do this? This is crazy. This is insane. I know, Lou, but it's where we live. And it's too late to move because we've been boxed in because we have a coronavirus wall and the rest of the world hates our guts and won't let us go there. And uh, that's too bad because I would love to go to Banff right now in Canada and just camp. Well, I don't really know how to camp, right? When there's bears, I know how to Missouri camp which is just snakes on the ground, beware. Anyway, um, he and I watched some of these baseball games and I said, why doesn't anybody have mask on? Like why the players, the people playing? So there's a guy at first base, base say my favorite Cardinal right now, Colton Wong. Colton Wong gets to first base. Well, yeah, they're two feet away from each other. No, no mask on. The only people that have mask on are the people um, with the, the equipment managers and coaches and manager guys. And our, our guy has a really tight, our, our coach has a really tight uh, facial mask and he chews gum and it's freakish because it looks like a mummy chewing gum on your television. Um, but when you see them all in the dugout, they're spitting, they're high-fiving, they're sweating. I'm like, okay, am I missing something here? No one's social distancing and they're all going to get it, right? I mean, that's what me and Lou were saying uh, two and a half, three weeks ago. His stupid Orioles. He, Lou is a Baltimore Orioles fan, uh, one of four total I've, in the world, probably. And he's the only one I've ever met, ever, in my life. You know how many Cubs fans I've met? Billions. Pirates fans, billions. Yankees fans, oh my God, million. Even the Mets. I, but <laughs> literally when Lou said that 30 years ago when I met him, he's like, I'm a big Orioles fan. I was like, huh. All I do is travel on the road and meet people, thousands of people. Never heard that. I've never met a Padre fan either, either when the, the San Diego Padres, I've never met one of those. Even the Rockies, even the newer teams have people, fans. But anyway, his first game got canceled because they were supposed, supposed to play the Florida Marlins. And then now the Cardinals are canceled. And then I had the thing. I don't know if I still have the, um, there's been like, it, it's already like seven teams and there's multiple games canceled. And you know, somebody else will be on the MLB network tonight. I don't know who, and they won't have mask on. I don't get, I don't get, they're not quarantining. They're going home at night. So they're around people. Like it's different. I think, I don't think basketball is going to work either. You can mark that down. You heard it right here next to the Dolly Parton candle. That's also sort of like a magic eight ball. Um, I don't think basketball is going to work. I don't think football is going to work. And I am not an alarmist. This is a crazy thing, too, because when I got off the road and I canceled Reno, Lewis was still going to do another show in Michigan or Chicago. I don't know. They were somewhere in the Midwest. And he's like, um, you're leaving? You're not doing the Reno show? I said, no, Lou, I'm not. I'm not going in a casino, which we all know those are never um, super clean to begin with. Not that I'm a super anal, you know, I don't care about that. I smoke and drink and gamble on filthy machines. I don't even care. But when there's... a uh, a disease going around, yeah, I'd rather not be in a casino where I already lean towards bad behavior. We all know that. And he, he said, well, I don't know. I don't want to be an alarmist. And I said, are you calling me an alarmist? Because if you are, I'm going to fly to wherever you are 
and punch you in the face. And he goes, no, I'm not saying that. But there were people saying that. And I'm like, look, I don't want to be an alarm. I'm never an alarmist. If anything else, I'm the opposite. I'm the fuck it, let's do it lady. No matter what. Hey, let's jump out of this boat and see if this lake's cold. Fuck it, let's do it. I don't, <laughs> I don't even put my foot in first. Jump, sometimes not so smart. Sometimes super dumb, but uh, I think this isn't, be, this isn't a matter of interpretation. If you believe the scientist, the CDC, because I have one friend who goes, there's so much information, I don't even know what's true. Just go to the CDC. I don't think they're lying. Maybe they are, but I think they're a non, I just tr trust that they're, and so far, the information has been correct. So if you just look at the information, and then I'm told, well, here's what you need to do. Social distance, wear a mask, um, not one or the other, both. But if you're outside, you should be a little further apart. And then I turn on and there's all of my beloved St. Louis Cardinals doing none of it. So either what I read is wrong or what they're doing is wrong, is, is not going to work. And so far, it hasn't worked. Maybe hockey, because they have those face shields, but you still have a locker room. Have you ever been in a hockey room? Locker room? I have. One time for ESPN2, I had to do a story about some team, the Omaha Lancers. Ever heard of them? I hadn't either. Um, and I haven't thought about them since. And I went in that locker room and almost passed out. I've never smelled anything so disgusting in my entire life. And then somebody said, oh, what's because of those pads? They sweat so much. Yeah, I get it. It's like laying on your couch as a big stink clown with sweat all over your ass. That couch is going to reek. I get it. Maybe hockey, basketball, no. Football, no. Won't work. Not until we get a vaccine. And then Lewis has a big theory that this vaccine is going to come um, by a company called AstraZeneca. And then um, it was pointed out to Lewis that they're a European company. So they'll probably give it to the Europeans first, I would imagine. And just as we would if Pfizer, Pfizer, the, I, I hope they, I kind of hope Pfizer doesn't figure it out because I think they're evil. I do. Like they said, they they don't give people the medicine they need at reasonable prices. They jack the shit out of it. But then they said they'd quit giving the medicine that kills people in the electric chair. Now that fluid or whatever. No, no, not the electric chair. When they put you down uh, with uh, this medicine, they said they'd stop doing that. I'm like, yeah, but you're already killing people that are good people that are alive by not giving them medicine. So you're just not going to kill the bad people that were scheduled to be killed. That's how I feel about Pfizer. Um, so... You know, cheers to whatever baseball team's left. I mean, I guess you could say you're the World Series winner if you don't get COVID. That's how that's going to work. Whoever doesn't get COVID. Because we say we're postponing them. Till when? 2021? This is the other thing I don't understand. Why in the world do we have to finish the sports? We don't need to finish the old hockey season. Just wait and start the new one. I get that football will need to start because it's not an old season to wrap up. We wrapped it up. Kansas City Chiefs. Yay, Missouri. Good job, Patrick. Uh, we won the Super Bowl. That was over. So you're going to start a new season. I understand that. Why are you making basketball finish the old season? I, it just it seems like a reach. I know it's all for money because then... My brothers will start in on, you don't understand the amount of money these people. I do, I do. Well, I don't really, but I know it's a lot. I know, and that's why Disney World's open. And right now, that might be the safest place in the whole planet, the Magic Kingdom. Because they, they have bouncers. You know what I'm sick of? Going up to Kroger and seeing a store manager yell at some hillbilly, and then the hillbilly yells back, you know what? I feel sorry for that man because he doesn't. A hillbilly don't, doesn't have a mask on. He won't wear a mask. Well, you know what? People can't smoke in here either. Jack Straw. Why? Health dangers, so they say. So we don't smoke in Kroger anymore. I remember when my mom did. I can picture her checking out. This is her saying. She'd be looking for coupons. And they're being ass like this long. And we're in a grocery store. I'm like, that's weird. That's going to fall on the bananas, mom. I don't give a shit. That's my impression of my mom grocery shopping in the 70s. <laughs> Cash only, too. No credit cards. Um, and then there'd always be something that had to get put back. That was always a big fight. Well, I don't have enough money. Your father needs his Oreos. You kids pick something you don't want. What? Why does he get the Oreos? The good shit? Hydrox is actually what he liked. Remember them? Hydrox cookies. That was my dad. Anyway, um, I just don't see how 
any of this is going to work. I don't understand why we're restarting things we don't need to when we could just start the things. Oh, in Disney World, I really do think is the safest place on earth because they have bouncers like Kroger. I feel sorry for the manager. That guy, that man took a job to be a grocery store manager. It did not say on the job application, would you like to be a bouncer during a pandemic r against raging hillbillies? It didn't say that. No, it didn't. They, Kroger is a national chain. Why don't you open your little checkbook, Mr. or Mrs. Kroger, or maybe they're like Miss Santa Claus, maybe it's Mr. and Mrs. Kroger, Claus, and um, hire a bouncer. Just a couple security guards. Comedy clubs have them. You know what they do? Throw drunks out all the time. And guess what? It's America. It's America. And they have freedom. But you don't have freedom to be doing shit that you can't do in that place of business. So that's, that's the answer to that. Let's get some security guards. I'm sure there's a lot of people out of work. I could be one. I mean, I'd need a weapon. <laughs> I'm, not going, I'm, not, I'm not physically tangoing with a hillbilly. How about, it, how about one of them taser guns? They, don't, they got lasers now, right? I just go, and the taser goes and hits them. Sure, I have nothing to do. Kroger, just letting you know, I'm available for that. Um, I've also seen it at the post office. A um, lot of, of the old turtles, as I call super old slow people, the turtles, a lot of old turtles wandering in, and I don't think they're being mean about it. I don't think they've heard, or maybe they don't know how to get a mask. A lot of fighting going on at the post office, and... Um, you know, where they've been good, the people are good. Lowe's, I don't know why. Maybe because they let you, do you, let you bring your dog into Lowe's, which I've always thought was wonderful. <sighs> I don't know. I don't think any of this is going to work, and I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I'm not normally, but I think baseball is proving it out. The only thing that's worked is golf, and even that didn't totally work because the caddies got it. Why? Because they make the caddies fly on regular airplanes. Everybody, every other rich jackass out there is flying on a private jet and then staying in a private home. I mean, it's just, and yet I sit there and watch billionaires golf. I do it. I do it. So that's my feelings on, um, the COVID. Here's my other, here's another little thing about the COVID that free, that I think is freaky. There seems to be a shitloads of strains of it. Lewis and I were talking about that. Like uh, the 41-year-old Broadway guy, he gets the blood clot in his leg. They have to chop up his leg. He had no preconditions, conditions, and then he's dead. Very sad. 41 years old. And then people go, "It's just the old people. It's just if it was just the flu, pff, sure, I'll get it. Let's get it. And move on. I get that. But shit, when you read some of the stuff that can go on, I, I'm not. It's Russian roulette. You know, four bullets are nothing. One bullet, you're." Pff, Anyway, what I did think was uh, we'll get off the COVID for a while. I just want to get that, be clear and have my predictions that none of this is going to work. The children are going to take over like Lord of the Flies. They're going to kill us all. They'll start with their parents and then their aunts and uncles like me, the ones that don't have kids, we're going to have to go in. Then they kill us. Then who's left? Grandma and Grandpa. Bam. Whole family's wiped out. The children have to run four-bedroom homes. I don't know how that's going to work. But it's a movie I'd like to, it's a reality show. So all you reality producers who got nothing to do, just hang in there. And we're gonna have Children of the Corn where they rise. And they, um, what did they do? I forget the line, and I remember the movie, but they took human adults as sacrifices to their demonic deity. Hmm? You think that can't happen again? I do. <sighs> Stay away from them, because they run up. And then you, then you think about your parents. My friend Dory, you know, we're all staying at home for grandma and her mom's at Target. Fucking grandma's at Target. I caught my mom pigging around the parking lot at Walmart. Told her, get, turn that car around. What is the matter with you? Walmart? I have a mask. I don't care. What do you need in Walmart, mom? I can have it sent to your house. I'll bring it to your house. Whatever you need, I'll bring it over. Well, we have to get out of here. We can't just sit here for the rest. Is this supposed to be the rest of our lives, Kathleen? I mean, seriously. Are we just supposed to sit here for the rest of our lives? And then my dad will start. I mean, Jesus, we could be dead. I may have a stomach vein that's going to pop as an aneurysm within the next three years. What, are we supposed to sit here and stare at a goddamn wall? <sighs> you know what? I don't know. If you two really want to get out and go get... It, it, this was the big destination. Well, 
We really like going to the Willows, which is a bar deep in the woods in the Ozarks, which I love. And it has very good food, actually. Oh, it's a lot of biker people and woodsy people. It's an eclectic crowd. Love the bar. And they're like, we haven't gone to fried chicken night in two months. I go, what? I said, well, what? what's fried chicken night? Tuesdays? That's the only night they have fried chicken. And it's delicious. And we have, I said, just then go at three o'clock when they open. I guarantee you'll be the only two people in there. Take your own forks. I don't know, put your head in a bucket and sit there and eat fried chicken. I don't, I don't understand why you guys can't. You, do you think you're going to die in the fall? You won't make it. Then, then you should go everywhere and just speed it up. But let's just assume you're not going to die of this. Okay? That's a little note to old people that are sneaking around. My friend Loreen caught her parents at a sushi, sushi restaurant in Northern California. And yeah. They don't even know we can track them, and they pick up the phone when I call. I can see where they're at. They're, they're sneaking around, and then my mom's like, well, I got to get a burner phone. I don't like being tracked like this. Oh, really, gangster? You, you're going to go gangster at age 78. Anyway, I just wanted to get my predictions out there. So when it starts happening, and it's not like I'm a smart person, I just read smart things written by other people on the internets. CDC. You know what else I do? I watch, I watch BBC News. Right. Not CNN, not Fox, not MSNBC. I don't watch those. Although, um, occasionally, occasionally I'll check in on everybody just to see what's going on on, on all three teams. Who do I like? Headline News. Well, yes, but that's a separate entity because they're not in the fight. That's what I like about Headline News, and I really like Robin Mead, and I got to meet Robin Mead because my dad really likes her, and I wanted her to sign. Um, uh, uh, she has a book she wrote, and I wanted her to sign a copy of it for my dad because he's, he, every day she says, Morning, sunshine. He always goes, How does she know I'm watching? I'm like, Dad, only in your fantasy is she actually speaking to you. But headline news is great because they just give you the headlines and there's no there's no opinions, there's no panels. It's just Robin. And then there's a sports guy. He does his thing. And then um, my friend Bob Van Dillen does the weather. Bob has really cool shoes. It's a little something to note. Check out Bob's shoes. He always has fancy shoes. And then my friend Jen on that show does the money. Smart lady. Um, so that's, that's a very concise... Um, way to watch the news. I like it. For the global thing, and to see what's really going on, I watch BBC News because, um, well, first of all, I know they're serious, smart people because a lot of them are ugly. And in our country, we just get pretty people to read. And I feel like if they're not super hot, maybe they're actually doing harder work. I mean, the news, where I live, this is how they'll present it. Well, there's a lot of COVID cases, but we're going to have a coloring contest for the children. If they're bored, it's going to download. You can download pictures and you can color COVID cells. Okay, I made that part up. <laughs> Not what it is, but I mean, the news doesn't even. And then they're like, well, you know, we're going to stay tuned. We got pictures of the biggest bass caught in Lake of the Ozarks this weekend. Which, by the way, I've sent some in of my parents. They haven't made it yet. I really want them to be on one time. <clears throat> so I'm making fun of it, even though I'm participating. But also, there's just BBC. They'll tell you what's going on in the whole world. They don't have an opinion. They don't. Sometimes they have panels on the late, late, late parts. And it's on every, it's on DirecTV. I don't know why more people that are sick of the bullshit just don't go there. And then, you know what? They call our asses out. Well, in the sad state of affairs, the United States leads the world in COVID cases with their leader, Donald Trump, today, who said you should put hydrochloroquine in your ass. Now, moving on, there was a cricket tournament in India. Yeah, that's why when some people say, well, I think this whole thing started so that, that Donald Trump wouldn't get reelected. And then like, I hear that. I heard that a lot at my lake bar before the bar closed. And then I'd go, oh my God, do you think the whole world did that? 
And then they go, well, I don't know anything about that. Okay, well, that's not, that's not a debate. You can't just shut your fort down because you don't know nothing about that. You just said something that's completely ridiculous, that the whole world had a meeting. Where? Where'd they have that? Did they Zoom? Did, did China Zoom Ireland and go, hey, we got an idea. Let's take this Donald Trump guy down, okay? We're all going to pretend or we're going to get it even more better. We're all going to get this thing called COVID. Come on, you know, no. But this is the craziest thing. <clears throat> well, I, I have something to tell you that. I'm going to tell you guys what I've been watching, what I've been doing. That's what these podcasts are about. But mainly I just want to get the COVID thing, my predictions on the record as the sports start to fall down. And when people say there's no sports, that's not true. My fat friend Bob is in a men's over 65 league. And I'd fucking watch that if somebody would film that. Sometimes I go. I'm not married to Bob. My, his wife is named Andy. She goes. And then I was like, well, I'd kind of like to see a bunch of old guys play softball. And they're still doing that in the Midwest and the South. So I don't know why ESPN doesn't send one of them young people, one of them youngins with a camera, and you get down there and film that shit. And then let us bet on it. Isn't there a way? Can't we do a virtual sports book and bet on if Fat Bob has a heart attack? Think of the bet you could make. Will Fat Bob run today? Yes or no? If Bob, Fat Bob runs, he's 67, will Fat Bob be able to run more than to first base without a heart attack? Over and under? Hmm? I don't know. That would have to be set by a real book, bookmaker. But there's sports. The kids are playing sports. Film that shit. I would watch anything sports-wise just because we have nothing. And we're going to get down to even less. So I don't know what the end is. Curling? No offense, Canada. But it's like shuffleboard without the drinking. That's how I view curling. And I know the people are really good at it, and I know it takes a lot of practice. It looks easy, but so does tennis. I thought tennis was as easy as it was, and then I went and played one day, and I'm like, shit, that was ridiculous. It's really hard. They just make it look easy on TV. Um, so today, this just this completely, I think because I, I do a lot on Twitter, I was not one of the, I have a blue check mark by my name. I do. And uh, I'm not really sure how I got it. Don't really care that, I mean, it's great, I guess. It, it makes me the official me. And as far as I know, there's never been somebody faking to be me on Twitter. There are people faking to be me on Instagram. And I don't even know why, why would someone do that? Like they're not soliciting anything. I don't get it. Um, there's another Kathleen Madigan on Twitter though, and she writes fancy smart articles for like the Wall Street Journal and stuff. So if you see that one and you see hard things about global economies and stuff, that's not me. I'm not that lady. I'm the other one. Anyway, um, so they arrested, the Twitter got hacked by somebody, they didn't know who. Everybody, not everybody, but a bunch of people with blue check marks, their accounts got hacked, everything went crazy. This was last week. If you don't know anything about Twitter, basically it's a live news feed. And uh, I don't know, people say it's all celebrities. No, it's not. I mean, I, if I wasn't even a comedian, I would be on Twitter because I would follow ESPN, I'd follow the St. Louis Cardinals, I would follow CNN, I would follow my friend Robin, I would follow my TV people, my shows, Ozark. It's, it's wonderful. If you, you, know, you don't have to, you don't have to, you can just be a voyeur. Like my friend Drew, I won't say his last name. Drew's just a voyeur. He's a, he's, a little, he's a little pig behind a curtain. He just watches the show, and he doesn't ever, sometimes he might like something. But he can't really participate because he's a financial advisor. And then if people saw him tweeting something or something or something, you know, you can't do that. Those people have to <coughs> not say things that are crazy. So they arrested a 17-year-old, and he was behind. He's the one who did it. The scam last month involving tweets that offered to send $2,000 for every thousand sent to an, an, an anonymous Bitcoin address. <sighs> Who's still doing Bitcoin? I did it. Not a lot of money. But that's what I'm talking in. I'm not an alarmist. I jumped right in. I didn't even research it. I just went, Ethereum, that sounds good. And I hit buy on a credit card. That's how good I'm managing my money. Fuck yeah, Bitcoin. I don't even check it anymore. It's like a dollar. I don't know. 
A Florida teen hacked the Twitter accounts of prominent politicians, celebrities, and technology moguls to scam people around the globe of more than $100,000 in Bitcoin. Okay, you know what I want to say to this teenager? Um, it's a dude. He's 17. Um, if you're smart enough to do that shit, why wouldn't you get a real job? Because where do you think you're going to spend your hundred grand in Bitcoin? Hardee's? Nope. Arby's? Nope. Who is taking the Bitcoin except some weird, probably strip club in Thailand? To, to do this for Bitcoin, for a little bit, for like a month, maybe six months ago, I started seeing signs, we accept Bitcoin in very random places. Those are all gone. Even the, it, it got kind of legitimate, it seemed. That's why I jumped in. No fear. Didn't even test the waters. Jumped right in. 17-year-old boy was arrested earlier in Tampa. <sighs> Hold my beer, Florida. What aren't you people doing down there? I mean, I work all over that state. In one city, I have fun in some cities. Others are so strange. Now you're all COVID monsters, and you got a hurricane coming. <laughs> Jesus is not happy. The baby Jesus is not happy with your behavior. Not all of you. And I'm going to refer to all of you, and you should know it as termites. Anybody listening to this, you're a termite. Why? It's a term of endearment because when Ron White, my comedian friend, stays at my house, it's very adorable to see a 230-pound man in his pajamas say, night-night termite. I make him say it every time he's here, and now I say it a lot. And if you aren't watching on my YouTube channel, I read... I'm reading, currently reading Tanya Tucker's autobiography out loud as story time. And those people, I tell them night, night, termite. And I'm going to sign off with you guys, even if it's not nighttime. That's okay. When you're listening to this, you can just turn on the end. It's, it's comforting. You'll see at the end. Anyway, the 17-year-old boy was arrested early on Friday. Uh, the, it, he faces 30 felony charges. Okay, the hacks bit led to bogus tweets being sent out by Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Mike Bloomberg, and other tech billionaires, Jeff Bezos, blah, blah, blah. His wife, oh, Kim Kardashian. Who gives a shit? Who would know if hers are fake or real? I mean, I don't even know why I'm supposed to know her. And then somebody goes, well, her, her and her sister made sex tapes. That's how they got famous. I'm like, well... Me and my sister aren't going to make sex tapes, so I guess we're not going to get famous. The tweets offered to send $2,000 for every $1,000 to an anonymous Bitcoin address. Who would, who would fucking do that? If he got one idiot to do that, I would be shocked. Twitter previously said, ha said hackers used the phone to fool the social media companies into giving them access. It said a targeted number, a small number of, uh, 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 it was a spear phishing. That's hard. The attack relied on da -da -da, the stealing employees. Uh, how he did it, 130 accounts. They managed to tweet. He tweeted from 45 accounts, this 17 year old. And now he's probably going to do it to me. No, 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 he's probably in jail. I bet. Did somebody bail his ass out? Maybe, did they bail him out on Bitcoin? Hmm? I haven't heard of that yet. How much is your bail? Hmm? How much Ethereum do you own? What? Do you have any Bitcoin? I actually do. It's not getting me out of jail, though, I can tell you that. Um, he downloaded Twitter data. data. He direct messaged people. Um, Dutch anti-Islam lawmaker Gert Wilders had his inbox was among the ones. Da, 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 da. I want to hear how much, how much time can he get. Um, who knows how he did it? This is the other thing. This is the other thing with the children. When the children rise, and they're rising, they're going to kill us all. Anybody you see under the age of 13, don't make eye contact. I'm telling you, it's not going to be their fault, but it's what's going to happen, and then they're going to enjoy it, and they're going to see a planet without us, and they're going to really like it. And that's why when uh, Donald Trump says he's going to cancel TikTok, I think, do, really? You think you're going to do that? I think the children will rise, and you, you don't want them mad at you. Look what this 17-year-old was capable you don't think he can bring TikTok back up just like that if your fat ass cancels it? <laughs> they love it. They wouldn't mind if you canceled Facebook. Maybe that. Um, yeah, so I don't know how long. Let's see if it says at the end of the thing how long he can. Uh, he's going to maybe go to jail for. Uh, then it goes into TikTok and how that should get in. And you know what? Here's how I feel about TikTok. 
I don't even, I mean, I know it because I've seen people doing my jokes on TikTok, which is fine and flattering because people are like, they're not giving you credit. I don't care. I put it on my shit. You know, it's my, I know it's my joke. I, do you think some housewife in um, Columbus, Ohio just has this one joke and put it on TikTok? No, clearly it's some, something else, whatever. Um, I don't think you can take those things away from the children. They love them. You can't, and then people say it's China spying on us. Maybe it is, but this is what I always say about all this shit I have. Take it, answer my emails. If you want to get into my email, go ahead. And I don't have any, I guess, banking. I just don't have anything interesting to steal. It's like uh, my dad, if he sees um, Alexa in your house, he'll throw it in the toilet because he used to be a lawyer and a judge and he thinks the government's listening to everything. Maybe they are, but I just don't got that much going on. Here's what I do have going on though. I'm gonna tell you guys this. This is my recommendation of what to watch this week. These are my Dolly quotes. Here's, here's one of my favorite Dolly Parton quotes. It's hard to be a diamond in a rhinestone world. You said it. We'll send you off with one after we're done. But if you're looking for something to watch, um, there, is a, there is a documentary on um, Netflix called Mucho Mucho Amor, except it's like this, uh, only for the people who can see it. I'm doing the blow you a kiss side. Mucho Mucho Amor. It's a docu and the only reason I watch this is because my friend Gabriel Iglesias, the comedian, um, he was so appreciative that they did it because this guy is an idol in um, Latin America, South America, well, he became global, but I guess I was too, too not paying attention or drunk or too young. It's usually one of those three when I don't know something I should have known. Drunk, not paying attention, that was a big one. Didn't read directions, Whew, huge. That's why it took uh, three months for me to set up a roadcaster. That was with videos sent by my friend John Heffron. He was nice enough to send videos to me to how to do it, and I still was like, fuck. I don't get it. Anyway, um, this guy, the documentary is about a man named Walter Mercado, his real name, Walter Mercado Salinas. He was born in Puerto Rico, 1932. He died in 2019 at the age of 87. So when you see the documentary, um, yes, he's not here, but he was, it's very recent. And it's the most fascinating thing because he's, he's Puerto Rican, born in Puerto Rico, poor, and they said at a young age he could, uh, like he brought a bird back to life in his hand. Now, I don't know about all that, but um, he became what I would describe as a combination of Liberace meets Siegfried and Roy meets the psychic hotline. Now, you would think in an area of the world where homophobia was running rampant at the time in particular, that someone like Walter would come out of his house, go somewhere, and probably get beaten up. No, Walter became the king. Walter dominated. Walter has capes. I think once you put on a cape, all bets are off. I don't know anybody who doesn't like a cape. Children like them. And if Fidel puts a cape on, it does change your view of the day. You have a cape on, it's just different. How do I know that? Because I put on my niece's capes occasionally. And it gives you a feeling of freedom, but people don't judge a cape. Well, they might think you're crazy, but they don't really judge it harshly. They don't judge it in a negative way. It's like a positive thing, especially if your cape is colorful and fancy. And he, so he got this segment on TV. I will not tell you everything about the documentary because I want to focus on one thing. It's, it's just, a, it's the craziest story about a person on earth that I've probably in the top 10 that I've ever seen or even read about. And I didn't know him, but like, um, I have a friend who's a bartender at the Mirage and he was like, oh yeah, give Walter a shout out. Like he, he's Filipino. He knew all about, he knows everything about Walter, Gabriel, every, all these people know all this stuff about this guy. He would come on TV, I think on Fridays and he would do, um, your horoscopes, it, but he was like in a King's throne and he had capes and beautiful jewelry and he looks like a woman. I mean, he, he could totally pass as a woman. So they didn't, even in the, the machismo climate of, of South America, Central America, all of that, they didn't seem to care. It's, it's very strange in a great way that Walter just got to be Walter. And, and Lewis kept saying, yeah, I know, but I don't really get this. I go, that's because you can't let go, Lou. You're focused on what is Walter. 
Is Walter a man? Is Walter gay? Is Walter really a chick? Is Walter a transgender? You're supposed to not care. That's the point of the capes. You're supposed to just go with it. You're not supposed to focus on what is Walter. You're supposed to focus on your horoscope. And then he would say really soothing, nice things at the end. And just through the documentary, I, I, I wish I could have seen Walter every night. They also go back in the documentary and show how good of a dancer he was and how handsome he was in college. That's really, really crazy. So he, he was very successful in Puerto Rico in some countries in um, South America and Latin America, blah, blah, blah. And then this guy, who I consider to be evil incarnate, this guy named Bill Bakula came into the situation. He faked that he wanted to get a reading from Walter, because Walter did psychic readings on the side. And, um, well, for those of you who are watching you, uh, this on YouTube, that's Walter. Now, Walter kind of looks like Joan London right there. That's the same haircut as Joan London in those senior commercials about what, where to put your parents when they're old. Anyway, um, so Walter's doing real good, right? He's making all kinds of money, and this guy fakes. He says, oh, I want to get a reading from you. Well, he didn't. He wanted to manage Walter, but that's how he got in the door. And Walter becomes friends with him, this Bill Bakula guy, um, who I, I just, I've never seen anything so uh, shitty um, from one person doing to another human and not feeling one bit of anxiety about it or, or regret or anything. Anyway, he does make global, he makes Walter global. And by God, he sure does. I mean, there's pictures of Walter with the Queen. This is all in the documentary. Um, presidents, Bill Clinton, Share. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it was Share, but people like that. Like, he, he's a global phenomenon. And this is like in the 80s and then the 90s. Um, and at some point, this is all in the show. I don't need to get specific. Bill presents Walter a contract. Walter has a lawyer, but Walter is on a different planet. When you see Walter, you go, probably not a big reader, not a detail guy about this kind of shit, because neither am I. Do you know how many contracts I've signed that I haven't read? It's embarrassing. Probably. Ron White goes, well, I know I've signed more, if you feel bad about yourself, Maddie. I said, well, I know my first CD, I shouldn't have signed that. It's a piece of shit. And then they never feel bad about it. Because they always write in perpetuity. That was a word when I was 25. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. I, and I, my dad was a lawyer. I didn't even show my dad the contract because I thought he'll just tell me not to sign it because he always says things like that when it comes to that, which is what you should say. But I wanted to do it. Anyway, Walter signs this contract because he trusts this guy. They've been together for a, quite a long time, for you know, five, ten years, and he has made him global, as he promised, and Walter has shitloads of money, and he signs a contract basically saying, you, Walter, will get a monthly fee for being Walter, but I will own you. Everything about you. Um, and Walter signed it. And then Walter realized pff, a little while longer that that was a terrible error, and he wanted to undo it. But unfortunately, with the law, these are things you can't undo. And they did pay Walter. And I must say, I do think a $32,000 a month clothing allowance was a lot. But when you see the capes, I mean, that probably only covered three. He was on TV all the time. Dude needs cape. Elton John was spending like 90 grand a month on flowers. I think 32 grand for capes is much more reasonable. And flowers everywhere. How many houses do you have, Elton? Anyway, um, when he died, he was worth $10 million, But I want to read you what he... Uh, the con He owned everything. He owned Walter's name, his likeness, his image. And Walter got mad because he started seeing horoscopes being printed that were reused ones. And he really did take it seriously. And he's like, you can't print old horoscopes under my name. And the guy's like, yeah, I can't. And then Walter got pissed. And then Walter disappeared off television and all the whole world besides Missouri, because we didn't know about Walter, um, freaked out. Where'd Walter go? And it was like a mystery, like a Howard Hughes thing. And it was just because he didn't, he couldn't be on TV anymore because he didn't want to work for that guy because that guy was just ripping him up. Um, listen to this. So I found, they don't tell you how much he got paid because this bill guy goes, Walter got paid, but he never says, well, how much did you pay Walter? Because I know you made millions and millions and millions and millions, be and still does, off Walter's name. They they ended up in court. Um, Walter got, 
think he got some of it back, but he was old by then, and he he had a heart attack and all this crap. So it was uh, here at the time. Mercado was not being paid for his appearances on Univision, but earlier in his career, an astrologer was able to earn money through multiple. He used to. This is how he made money. He had um, his astrology line. He was on um, the dating site Passion Latinos, which aimed to match people by their star signs. He also had a line of body lotions, mist, soap, and candles. I don't know why he didn't sell cheap versions of his capes, because I would have bought 10 of them. You know, the knockoff, the Target uh, version. Bill said he didn't want to hurt Walter financially, stating he only asked for $1 in damages when Walter wouldn't do anything anymore. And Bill's like, I need you, you to get that and work your ass off to make me more money. Walter just said, fuck it. And, the, and then he got in trouble. And then the court papers show in the documentary that Bill was lying. He was actually seeking around $15 million. While the trademark dispute was ongoing, Walter wasn't allowed to use his name. And his segment on Premier Impacto was cut. So he got kicked off TV, um, basically. Um, and here's why he was mad. Um, he signed that contract uh, after 11 years. He, uh, it was in 1995 he'd signed that. It's just a disgusting, I do not understand. I'm going to find out, I'm going to tell you what. Uh, so the, the people who did the documentary, they went and found this Bill guy. And wait till you see him in the show. He just, there's just nothing. They're like, do you regret doing this to Walter? No. I, I, we bought a business. We bought Walter and he got paid. I don't have any regrets. Like just cold, opportunistic asshole. Like you could have been nice and said, I understand you did take him global. So you get something for that. And then you go, Hey, how about we go 50, 50 and do the right. Just because you can take advantage of someone doesn't mean you should. And I've just, and I know there's a lot of people that disagree with that. They think, well, it's just, you know, man eats man and dog eats dog world, but whatever. Um, so these people found Bill and, uh, they said, where did you find him? He was in Thailand. Um, and they said, what was Bill doing in Thailand? He was participating in agricultural business for the Thai government. And then the interviewer says, you know, the obvious step, next step for an entertainment, um, manager, right? And he, and the guy laughs, or the lady laughs, I don't know. He was very proud to tell us that Walter had been paid, paid for this business and this business was now feeding the hungry, so Walter would like it. I don't want to butcher it, but I think it was some form of GMO-type rice to feed hungry people. He was per cooperating with the Thai government and was living in Phuket, or might be pronounced Phuket. 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 See, the bartender knows more than me. I thought it was Phuket. B-H-U-K-E-T. Yep, Phuket. We learned something today. See, termites? We're learning. Then they said, is he still in Thailand? I don't know, to be honest. He has a re they don't know where he is. And they, he met him at some Airbnb in LA. And just so you don't feel bad, because you don't want to end on a sad note with Walter, right? You can still go watch him on YouTube all you want. And here's the greatest news. Well, the greatest news of the show, Walter, before he died, they already had the, they had the first 15 or 20 minutes of the film completed. <clears throat> and for Walter, when he was 87, to be able to see that was great because that was the really, the first 20 minutes, you just think Walter's the craziest thing to ever enter your house in a great way. And so he didn't have to see the part about the fighting and all that because he really didn't like it. Um, and then I have Bill Bakula's resume. It's all a bunch of horse shit. He's, he's a con man and he, he's good at it. He's very good at it. But um, boy, you want to talk about an unlikable person. But Walter is wonderful. And I'm going to go download all my Libra horoscopes in Spanish. Well, I guess I have to learn Spanish. Maybe, maybe, maybe I can subtitle them. Maybe I'll just send them to Gabriel Iglesias and he can read my horoscope to me. Because I don't know Spanish. <sighs> That's what I'm going to do. All right. Sad I can't go to my lake bar anymore. I took Lou there a long time ago. He said, do they have a wine list? I said, Lewis, they have a stuffed squirrel playing a banjo. Nope. They're not going to. They have red, white, or pink. You pick it, Lou. That's what they have. I'm going to send you guys off with a Dolly Parton quote. I already gave you one. We'll quote different people as time goes on, but... Some of Dolly's are kind of uplifting in the middle of a pandemic. I think we all need a little bright light, light to shine.
don't y'all? I do. Someday, too, I'm going to blow dry my hair. That'll be exciting. I haven't done that since March. No, I did it for one of my, I have a cooking video, only one. I'm gonna teach you people how to make a cheese ball, a Midwest cheese ball with dried beef properly. And please don't yell and scream, where do I get this dried beef? I've never heard of it. It's in Kroger. Don't be an alarmist about the dried beef, okay? Let me find a Dolly part, <laughs> quote. I like this one. They think I'm simple-minded because I seem to be happy. Why shouldn't you, why, why shouldn't, I'd be happy. I have everything I ever wanted and more. Maybe I'm simple-minded. Maybe that's the key. Simple. Here's another one you can take on down the road with you, termites. Smile. It increases your face value. Okay. Well, I hope you guys like this because this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. And then I don't know if I'm going to turn into Walter. Well, maybe I'll start wearing capes. I don't have any capes. I bet I can get them online. I don't want to rip off Walter's idea, though. That would be shitty, hacky. But if you did it in his honor, right, I'll get a picture of Walter and put it right here and take my Irish JMO thing, put it right there. All right, termites. I'm glad you guys listened. You're going to tuck yourself in tonight. Whenever you think about this, you're going to get your it's summertime. It's hot as shit most places. So you're going to get your um, cool summer sheet. You're going to pull it up to your neck. Just tuck it over. Get super comfortable and uh, know that you're a good termite and you're a worthy termite. And I'm gonna sign off telling you, night night termites. Yeah.